Okay, so I am here today with uh, for Sport Business Institute and for Latin Business Today with uh, a dear friend, uh, a terrific guy, and a really talented guy by the name of Jamie Skiles. And Jamie is the president, founder, and uh, uh, jack of all trades with Phoenix Design Works. And if you haven't heard of or don't know what Phoenix Design Works, stay tuned because this is probably, at least in my opinion, one of the premier branding logo design uh, marketing companies you, in, in the world. And he, his, he and his company, which we'll learn about shortly, have done tremendous work over the years. So welcome, Jamie. Thank you, buddy. So good to see you. And thank you for the kind words. Well, I mean, they're, they're well deserved. I, you know, you know me, I don't lie. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so Jamie, why don't you just tell us, um, why don't we start at, I always like to start at the beginning. Tell us about yourself. You know, well, you know where you're from, kind of how you got started in this business, and 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 spring us down that road a little bit. Sure. Um, born and raised Dallas, Texas. Um, got to a certain age, understood. I think this is still true in large part, but maybe not as much with the internet and and growth of the market. But in those days, if you were gonna be the best in the world you had to move to New York. And, you know, I think that holds true in a lot of fields, but um, so I uh, came up here, um, just, I, you know, I, I, I'm one of those lucky people that I get to do what I always wanted to do. You know, it's my earliest memories are of drawing and I didn't really understand what that would be in 2020. Um, but you know, I still get to do what my life's instinct has always been to do. Um, over the years, uh, you know, the short, the elevator pitch, we've worked for, uh, franchise league and events for all major league sports. Um, we've done 50 of the fortune 500 consumer brands. And uh, we've also uh, done about 500 or so collegiate properties. Um, we do branding and advertising. So when I first got into this business, it was advertising. And then these little subdivisions like branding, packaging, you know, these things kind of broke out to more specialist entities um and uh, and i love uh you know it, it's a good thing i love doing sports branding because that's 90 percent of what i did <laughs> yeah well and let's let's talk about that for a second because um obviously i mean just uh, uh who is who you know in terms of, of of the work you've done now i you know i i'm, I'm trying to remember or trace back how we met originally it's been it's been a long time but mm. um, you know, obviously, um, give us some of the, give us, I don't know, 250, hundreds of clients. It's kind of hard to narrow it down, but maybe the most recent clients, maybe in, this, in, the, in the college athletic space. Sure. So in, in college athletics, if you look at the SEC, we did, um, we've done Arkansas Razorbacks twice. Mm -hmm. It's always an honor to be brought back to redo your own work. Yeah. Um, Tennessee, Ole Miss, LSU. Um, in the Ivy League, we've done Brown. Uh, we've done Harvard. Um, on the West Coast, we have we did the uh, 100 Championships program for UCLA. Uh, we did branding and advertising for UCSB. Uh, we've done brand, brand and advertising for CSUB. Um, we did uh, UC Merced uh, in the Midwest. Uh, we've done Drake, uh, both university and athletics. Um, we've done, you know, schools all across the country. Um, in this area, we've done half the constituent schools in MAC uh, with uh, Rich Enzer. We've done all the MAC branding um and yeah 
Yeah, that's it's interesting. By the way, I love the fact that the dog just wandered in and, and laid yes. down, and it's great. Great to have a business partner like that, right? That's right. We love. Like, we yeah, love, I've we heard love all this before. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, tell me, um, so you know, is there a big difference when you work for you know uh, the college athletic side of the house as opposed to the academic side of the house? Is there is I mean, is it a mentality or is it, I mean because sure. obviously. You know, having worked in college athletics and sports, you know, I think I think we kind of get the whole need for the for what the branding and what you kind of do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, I think, you know, and this is also too. everybody comes to this field from a different uh, previous life, a previous uh, experience, you know, as and kind of what I alluded to before, I, I kind of I came up in advertising. Um, so kind of the the height of that was working for Ogilvy and Mather, Young and Rubicom. Um, and, and in the course of that, you'll work for clients like Jaguar. Um, uh, Fireball is a very famous brand that we did. And I should give a shout out to my buddy, uh, Ross Sutherland, who, believe it or not, Dave, I've known some, he's somebody I've known even longer than I've known you. <laughs> And uh, so all of my, I've said not all the, but like the vast majority of my advertising work I've done with Ross. So he and I worked together some 30 odd years. Uh, and uh, so anyhow, so those, like, so you learn certain lessons about, uh, you know, branding and, and basically in that world, uh, if you don't generate revenue, if you don't, uh, improve the bottom line, you know, you don't work. Yeah. So um, I learned, you know, as the prime, what's the primary purpose of branding? Generate revenue. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, but as applied to collegiate athletics, you could say, well, that manifests in different ways. You know, if you go from a two year to a div three, to a div two, to a div one, those are all they're, they're distinctly different set of goals. And, you know, some people charge tickets for a game. Some people don't. Yeah. Uh, some people have a, a larger donor booster program in the in-house and, and others don't. It changes geographically. I mean, that's why I'm always kind of fascinated when I look at the licensing side and when I look at the uh, rights side. Right. Uh, people try to <clears throat> find a solution that's going to work for everybody. Yeah. Now that's tough because all collegiate programs, from my life experience are uniquely different. Right. So, uh, so I think you've got to be able to change on that. And then, and as you pointed out, we kind of get the, the athletics concerns and, and, you know, and they are, as I stated, plus a, a handful of others, you, you, you know, with a brand, a uh, consumer brand, you might be able to perceive a, a larger block of uh, consumer audience, uh, yeah. be able to lump more commonalities in there. I think with collegiate brands, they tend to have three, four, five unique constituent bases. Right. Uh, the local community, uh, where we draw from, uh, for our uh, students, new students, our boosters. Yep. Uh, but then on the other side of campus, uh, you know, the work that we've done on the university side is uh, really towards uh, getting new students, getting uh, enrollment. Um, and so you yeah. really need to, you need to go in. What you do kind of is, is an analysis. Right, you need to get into their heads. What is it you want from Absolutely. this? Right? Absolutely. Well, and that also goes towards you know there there's there are um, there are people who might focus more on themselves mm -hmm. in this process, uh, but I've learned that that's really uh, you know you got to put your own ego aside. Doesn't matter what I want. And it really doesn't even matter what they want. You know, it's uh, our first collegiate property that we worked on was with uh, a guy that I'm sure you know, uh, Dave Roach. And, uh, and 
when we were talking, when we were doing our interview to, to get the work, there was a, a kid that we were in a, a, a conference room uh, overlooking the basketball court. Mm-hmm. And it was probably, I think, a Friday night. Meetings was, were running long. But there was one kid down on that court shooting baskets, student athlete, his Friday night, you know. And so, and it just, you know, it just occurred to me. I said, it's not about what I want. Mm-hmm. It's not what about, about what you want. It, it, it's about that kid down there. Yeah. That student athlete. That's who we're working for. Yeah. You know, and, um, and so I think that there's a lot of truth in that. Um, you know, so, so on the other, other side of campus too, you might have, you might have five colleges uh, of study within uh, under a university heading. Yeah. Um, so when you're working on that branding, it has to extend to and service uh, all aspects, uh, you know, of the university. I think with Drake um, that I mentioned earlier, you know, we did their athletics, we did their uh, university, we did the relays, but each of those uh, properties was having a big anniversary logo, a big anniversary at the same time, a hundredth anniversary, 125th and so on. So there were really nine different things that we had to address there. And uh, I think with the universe, between the university and athletics, there were 900 different pieces of communication in the final style guide. Yep. So, you know, I'm glad you mentioned uh, fireball whiskey because, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, whenever I'm in a bar, which, you know, for me is not very often. So, right. Right. <laughs> Well, it's certainly not recently. No. I'm just reaching over my desk here because... That's fine. There yeah. you go. My portfolio, everybody. There you go. So, there it is. So, well, at least it's full. So, yes. the, um, you know, if, if I, and obviously if I see it, you know, and I try to say this early on when I'm there, you know, my buddy designed that logo because otherwise <laughs> if I'm sitting there for a while, they might think, you know, all right, cut them off, you know, but no. <laughs> but I, I think that's that's a really cool thing. And it shows, <clears throat> I think it shows your, you know, how expansive you, you are in your, in your talent. So <clears throat> well, with that being said, excuse me, um, well, you know, what's your what's your favorite piece is there if i had to say jamie you can only hang one piece of art that you've done or one logo or one thing in your in your you know in your office which one would it be which is the one you go i like that because i'm sure there's stuff that you've done that you're like you did it more for the client you know it's what they wanted and you're like okay you know i would have did it differently but this is what you want right (laughs) yeah there's you know and that's that you kind of speak to so a lot of, of, of life, uh, branding is the same as a lot, a lot of it's about balance. And, uh, you know, so we try to balance our, our clients' needs. Uh, you, are you going to be able to edit this? Yeah, we'll edit it. Okay. Yeah. Let me go get the dog that's barking. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Let me park. Um, <laughs> So, um, so I think branding is, uh, it's like life. It's about balance. And so while we try to balance our clients needs, we also work as advisors. We'll say, well, you know, um, I hear you. I know you, you think, you know, you, you you want to go this direction. Here's my concerns going this route. Right. Or, uh, oh yeah, this is a great idea, but somebody else did it a year ago or, you you know, we just try to steer them and help that, you know, be a team player. So being a team player is an important part of what we do. Now, the reason I say all that as a preamble to answering your question is right now, right here, right now, I would put the Chick-fil-A peach bowl uh, up on the wall. I and and I don't say that because um, 
Well, actually, I do think it is a pretty great uh, design. Well, let me rephrase that. I say that because of the greatness of the people I worked with. Nice. They, uh, David Epps, uh, Gary Stoken, Matt, those guys were just amazing people. Nice. And I was humbled by uh, what a great team they are and, and how gracious they are. And it was also, um, now in working for the bowl game world, we've had the good, the good fortune to work for Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. Uh, we've done a lot of work for um, the uh, Alamo, the Valero Alamo Bowl. Um, uh, Doug uh, Mosley and the Boca Raton Bowl and uh, Johnny Williams and the Camellia Bowl. Um, and in, in all of those cases, those guys are all heavily involved in their communities. They make a difference in their communities. Uh, and all of the bowls have a, a, a chair, a one, a, at least one, but they have charitable causes. And they set new records for, for helping charities and giving back to the community. I just, I think that that is, is fantastic. Yeah. You know, so, so I really, I, so I would pick the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl right here, right now. If, uh, if, you know, I, I love you guys. <laughs> I, I love everybody. I love everybody. And that really is, you know, it, it, back to the balance thing. Yeah. You know, I spend 18 hours a day in Adobe yeah. products, you know, working in Illustrator, Photoshop, and that sort of thing too. So, because we kind of have to be new school. Yeah. But my portfolio really could be my um, client references. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important that at the end of, at the end of the day, your clients are willing to say, yes, they're, they were good guys. Yes, they were there when we needed them. Yes, they went above and beyond. The work that, you know, we continue to generate revenue off the work they did for us. Uh, you know, all of those positive things. When you, when you, let's just say you take an average uh, uh, athletics director that you're going to be working with on a new, new branding project. It's not his job, her job, to say whether what you did is good or not. It's their job to, but they should be able to, to um, read what their, what their co, you know, what the other people in their field have have had to say about the work experience of working uh, of working with you. Right. Yeah. I think, you know, this is very, you know, what Lou Lamarillo once said, and we were, we had him speak and he, he basically said, um, it, it's better for other people to say nice things about you than, than to, for you to talk about yourself. Right. So let others, yeah. praise you, right. And, and so I think, and, and, the, and, and the point is, and I would encourage people, and we'll get back to this, you know, where to reach you and everything a little bit, but phoenixdesignworks.com is your website. Yes, sir. And on your site, it walks through all the stuff that we're talking about. And, it's, and we'll, we'll include this link in the article as well. But I think it's really cool because and you have your, re and your references, you know, obviously by client. So from ESPN through the Mac, et cetera. And I just looked up, you know, the, the Chick-fil-A because that was the one you, you mentioned. And I think it's important. This, this kind of a quote from David Epps basically saying, you know, the best thing about you guys is you listen, you understand their needs and, and you deliver. And he said the best evidence that for him is that they kept going back time and time again to work mm -hmm. with you guys. So, I mean, that's quite an honor. And it really, you know, and this is where you know, and I get it. I mean, I, I know what kind of work you do and, and the work you've done. So um, it's just, it, it's been, a. I mean, seriously, I mean, I'm not, you know, this is as a friend, but but also as as a colleague and somebody who's been in the industry for many many years. You know, I uh, congratulations on on just on what you've built, really. Oh, well, thank you so much, but I really appreciate that. I really appreciate that. You know, it's and at the end of the day, too, it 
the main thing is that you, you know this is for me uh hopefully uh we get to change the world and make it a better place now that may seem you know to an outsider that may seem uh a silly comment to say oh how how could something like branding make the world a better place well if that brand, and again, uh, just to come back to, you know, I hate to, it's, uh, it's, it was drilled into me as a young man, as a, as a little boy starting out in advertising. Uh, you, but if we generate revenue, you can afford a new weight room. Mm -hmm. If we can generate revenue, you can, you can have money towards scholarships. Mm -hmm. when, when I, if I, if I can see that we're generating rev and, and, um, you know, CLC every year puts out their top 75 programs. We're always, we always have, uh, our clients are, are half of the top 10 and, uh, and half our clients are the, uh, uh, everything after the top 10. So, so that is proof to me that what we do works. Right. And, and uh, so if we can generate that rib, if that can then find its way into a scholarship for a kid, I like to think that somewhere out there is a kid or kids I've never met and never will meet, but are having their lives changed through collegiate sports, yes. having their lives changed through a college education nice. that, that is life changing for them. And so, you know, that's how I kind of like hope that we do something good in this world. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, obviously this world is, is in a very peculiar and uh, rare, hopefully extremely rare time that we're, we're going through now. And let's talk about that a little bit. How has the COVID um, pandemic whatever adjective you want to use, disaster. Um, how has it affected you? How has it affected your business? How are you dealing with that? Yeah, well, you know, my flippant answer at the beginning of all this is uh, for a guy who spends uh, 18 hours a day in front of a computer, not that much difference. <laughs> but, but then the months rolled on. Uh, <laughs> so, well... Uh, point in case, we were, uh, uh, Rich Edzer, uh, a dear friend to both of us, and a, and a great human being. Uh, he did not pay either one of us to say that. Nope. Uh, but he, he again, there's a, there's a, but, that, but you know what, that I mentioned, there's a great guy that, uh, just like I would, you know, you said something earlier, you said, uh, it's much better to have other people uh, say nice things about you than to have to say it yourself. Mm -hmm. And I, and yes, and the, and, and implicit in that statement is, uh, then they'll know you by your actions. That's right. Nobody says, nobody says, uh, nice things about you for something you said, <laughs> you know, they'll say nice things about you for something you did. Yeah. So, uh, Rich is one of those guys. Yeah. He's uh, obviously affected a lot of lives and absolutely that. Uh, he had invited us down to um, just kind of do a, a capabilities presentation to everybody uh, uh, during the basketball tournament. Uh, Friday the 13th, if that, uh, if you put any stock in that, in uh, Friday, March 13th. And, uh, and I remember it because we'd gone down, we had had dinner with uh, Amy's mom. I should, by the way, Take this opportunity to mention Amy. Scott. I was going to ask you about Amy in a minute, but that's go yeah. ahead. I, let me just jump in and just say you have a, you other than the, the dogs in your in your place, you have a a business partner. Yeah. Tell us about Amy. She's uh, fantastic. She she gets to be both a fantastic uh, human being and uh, the light of my life. So. Um, we've worked together uh, now a number of years. You know, we didn't work together initially. Amy, uh, when we first met, uh, she was uh, doing large format uh, printing. She'd do like um, Saks or uh, Bloomingdale's or some of the, you know, the large printing projects were there. And that's how we met. Um, 
And then uh, shortly thereafter, I asked her to marry me. Uh, uh, even shorter after she said yes. <laughs> and what well, we didn't get to, we didn't get into business initially because we thought, oh my God, that, that'd just be, you know, that's crazy talk. That's, you know, would be too much. Um, what ended up happening was she did end up helping me out in a time when, uh, you know, we needed somebody to help with client service stuff. And I realized um, that it was actually a plus because putting in these kinds of hours, uh, I didn't get to see her as much as, you know, we didn't get to see each other as much as her. So it's, it's turned out to be very well. So sometimes the thing you think won't work will actually work. And I, I think that's a good lesson in branding too. You know, you're trying this, whatever. So anyhow, Amy is wonderful. She does all her client service. She, uh, does, uh, you know, the client contact, uh, we'll see a lot of the projects through on the client side uh, in the course of getting them done. So, yeah, she, she's amazing. And so I diverted you, I apologize, to bring us back no, no. to Friday the 13th. And yes, you yes. So, yep. so uh, we go down to AC. Uh, they're having their basketball tournament down there. And uh, we had seen her mother for dinner. Mm -hmm. All back to the hotel room. And remember that guy? I can't remember the guy's name, but uh, he was the NBA player that touched all the microphones. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the guy with, I don't even know. Oh, the NBA cancels everything. Right. Yeah. <laughs> then I think the NHL canceled everything. The and then MLB. I'm watching, and then all the universities of the NCAA, and, and I'm watching my entire career <laughs> disappear in front of me. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm saying to, I said to Amy, I said, I don't have any texts and I don't have any emails, but it's hard for me to imagine that the only sporting event that will continue to happen in America tomorrow is, is the MAC basketball. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah. So we, we showed up and, uh, and they were very gracious, but you know, they were in the middle of trying to deal with all this too. Yeah. And the game that we walked into uh, you know, it was just kind of surreal because the the kids were playing, everybody, and the coaches and the, and the security and everything was there. Nobody in the nobody in the stands. You know, yeah. that was kind of. And but of course, that was just a uh, that was just a uh, you know a, a foretelling of what was yet to come. So yeah. uh, and and ultimately, you know, we said hello to the pe people that we knew and got out of their hair. Because they had a lot to do. Rich was on the phone with, I think, all the university president. You, you know, they had a lot of uh, bigger things to deal. Anyhow, that was how this began for me. Right. right. Uh, we wanted to do something to help. We wanted to not just be victims. We wanted to be warriors. You know, we wanted to do so. We said to do this. So, Amy much to her credit, this is one of the best things I, I've ever seen her do. She's like, um, what do we have with plastic? Well, we had 500 sheets of plastic. Uh, you remember when we used to do manual printed presentations, they had plastic cover sheets? Yep. Well, those could also be used as face shields. Right. Well, yeah, yep. and Amy jumped in, she got hooked up with the Soma sewing volunteers and i just give them a shout out because uh she got involved uh sewing and pleading and making and um to date those guys have delivered over twenty-five thousand masks to the hospitals around here yeah that's great yeah and then i thought okay what can i do so what I did was I, uh, I thought, well, I'm going to develop new lines of merchandise because I could do that. Uh, and then I'm going to sell those uh, and I'm going to um, give the money to the uh, American Nurses Foundation right. to help, you know, to also help support the nurses. Right. So we did that. I had to start a new company because I thought, you know, this is kind of a social 
statement. I'm, I, I don't know that it will be, you know, we just, we didn't know anything at the time. Yeah. It was all new territory, but I thought, you know, I should probably set up a new company because those, those social statements may not, may or may not be supported by right. clients. Right. So we did. So I got to figure out how to do that, you know, uh, uh, online, set up a new company, um, got them going. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> Sorry. So, uh, so we wanted to help. So I, <laughs> I set up a, a new company, uh, Anvil Alchemy. We, we started doing this. I figured out how to work with um, a company called Teespring to set up their, uh, um, you, you know, you can set up a storefront. They'll do, they'll print, they'll ship, they'll do with customer service. All the things you don't want to do. Um, and uh, half the money goes to that part of the process. And um, so that, now we start supporting the American Nurses Foundation with, uh, with the revenue from that. So we had half of the hat. So 25% goes to them. Okay. And um, so that's kind of, you know, it was very interesting to me. It was fascinating to me because it was proof of concept. I was like, oh my God, this could actually work. Yeah. So. You know, so we got these storefronts up. We're selling merchandise in support of the, uh, and then um, uh, Scotty Rogers and Jason Fine, um, two guys in the collegiate world that you may know. Um, Scotty just uh, went to work for the Cotton Bowl, and uh, Jason is the uh, AD of base. But on the weekends, they do a Zoom uh, DJ show. <laughs> so it's, and that was really cool too, because a lot of, you'd see a lot of your collegiate buddies, you know, on Zoom yeah. and they, and they spin records and they do their DJ thing. It's so cool. I mentioned that uh, to say that um, we did, we did a, a branding and merchandising for them, which in turn goes to, uh, gets sold in support of the nurses, which in turn supports that that good cause. So we found ourselves doing that. Then, as things started to come back, uh, because we had a ton of things we were right in the middle of, yeah, that just got stopped. So fortunately, um, we were doing a rebranding of Montclair, and um, that went forward. I'm sure you saw that get released. And uh, then um, DCC Phantoms, DCCC Phantoms, uh, we just uh, uh, released the other day. Uh, we have a couple of other schools that are close to launching their programs. Uh, the MAC 40th, uh, we were able to do. Um, so we, we started being able to work with our clients and pick that up and kind of resume things and get things done uh, and join the, the rest of the world, including you, which I'm sure you do. How many Zoom calls a week? Figure one a day at least. Yeah. 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 yeah join the world of Zoom. Yeah. Right. It's, uh, I wish I had bought the stock earlier. But. <laughs> I wish I bought the stock. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I'm always touched too because in every community that those new, when you see a new branding program come out, especially after being in quarantine for three months, yeah. it's kind of like, it, you know, it's the same thing we rely on uh, every, you know, every year with Easter, you know, yeah. or with spring. It's kind of like there's a promise of a, of a new day. Renewal, yes. Yeah. Now throw your curveball. I didn't, I didn't prep you for this, and I, you know, I, I think this is, but, and this is not, we're not going down any political roads here, but I'm just curious about your thoughts. Um, we just saw the Washington Redskins, you know, are going to have to, I mean, they're going to have to rebrand. I guess have to is, is kind of a misnomer, but it, they are going to. Um, yeah. And, and so they've, they've, they've taken the Redskins logo. Obviously, they're, they're, all the company, there's no longer hats or t-shirts or anything. Redskins are gone unless you have something with that on there. 
how would you, if Daniel Snyder called you, and he should call you, by the way, uh, this afternoon and said, Jamie, you know, what should we do? What, I mean, uh, uh, name aside, let me see, how, do we, how do we get this thing going? How do we make it, you know, so that our fans stay with us or uh, that, that, that they don't feel, you know, the, the ones who like the name and the ones who didn't like the name, but let's, how do we pull this together? And, and, and what would you recommend him do, to do for his new brand, really, is what it is? Yeah, well, it's, it, you know, and it's very funny that you should bring that up because we actually did – uh, a number of, uh, well, I think maybe two years ago, you know, because this, this pressure to rename them has, it kind of co has come and gone over yeah. the years. Yeah. And at one point in time when it was kind of more in the zeitgeist, uh, we got a call from Bloomberg news and they said, Hey, we want to run an article on this. And we, we'd like, you know, we've come up with some names. We'd like you to, could you just quickly do, a logo for each name and we'll get that out there. And I did not think that I was working on a rebranding of the Redskins that they were going to go forward with. But what I did think was that um, it would be a huge publicity uh, for us. Yeah. So, and, and our, you know, our stat, our, our analytics for social uh, that I look at for our site and stuff, those all jumped by a factor of 10. Yeah, so right. tenfold more people in the world were looking at us that week than uh, before. And tenfold of those people looking at us called us every name in the book. Oh. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> It's like it was my first big exposure to yeah. <laughs> an angry fan base. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, it was like, hey, I, I, you know, this, this was <laughs> my. <laughs> 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 Anyhow, all in good fun, all in good fun. But uh, I think that the, you know, and and it's not the first. You know, we we probably have done half a dozen to a dozen colleges and universities over the years. A you know, when it became a federal mandate for colleges and universities to address this same issue. Um, yeah. yeah, my, you know, my go-to would be research. I mean, the first thing you got to do is sit down because there has to be a reason why. Um, there, there are a couple of, of things about branding. If it, I can spend... Uh, I'm just going to use a round number. I could spend a million dollars to try to convince you to like my new brand. But if I can arrange or if uh, luck would have it that you can discover this brand on your own, that's worth 10 times that. Yeah. <laughs> so if the consumer believes that they have a discovery process of their own. That is, that's invaluable, yeah. all right? Okay, the other thing too is that uh, telling a story, you know, so I mean, branding is, is not really come that far from the days of Mark Twain uh, in terms of being a storyteller. And therefore, I guess it, we really haven't diverged that much from the ancient Greeks, uh, but it's telling stories. And in, in the case of Brainy, you're telling the story towards an end, towards a purpose, uh, us versus them. And so uh, you got to dig deep and say, okay, what else could it be? Because if you come out with a new brand, uh, especially for a sports team, where the audience is, is I mean, fan, uh, sports are one of the things that make sports sports is that the fan base is they're either uh, they were brutally faithful or <laughs> or the opposite of that. Yeah. And so if you if you were to make a change that was not genuine, that was not believable, that uh, they couldn't have faith in, uh, that would be a worse catastrophe than the one you're trying to address. So what's what do you? It has to be based on something. There has to be a reason 
why. Yeah. Uh, so you got to dig deep. And, you know, it's uh, interesting times that we live in. So you have to find, I think, a, uh, if you're going to dig deep, you're, you're digging into history. And if you're going to dig into history, well, you have to find a, uh, something in, in your history that is universal to everybody, you know, that we try to walk that balance, that we try to uh, not uh, uh, go one way. You, you, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, so that, so that research process and that uh, trying to come together, you know, it's just sim similar things too with, um, you know, we've gone through this process a lot where it's, it wasn't just the uh, American Indian heritage uh, for that. There have been other properties over the years too where, uh, you know, just historically like this, this icon may have made sense uh, 75 years ago and now it's being questioned, you know. So, so that, that's, that is a process that we've done a lot. Um, and so I think you do, you do your research, you solve the problem as many ways as you can. That's always the goal is, you know, phase one of any brain birth. I want to provide as many solutions as possible, given the time and budget to do it in. And, and so then you're going to do your focus groups, then you're going to get your feedback, then you're, you know, you're, you're going to revive. It may be, you know, and there's two ways you could go. It could either be something so generic, like on the wall behind you, sir, the Jets. Well, the Jets is, Jets is a word. It's a brand. It's a thing that could, that without having a specific image can conjure up something uh, positive, it, but different in many different minds, you know? So it's kind of a, a more larger scale perception. You, you know what I mean? Yep, absolutely. Uh, whereas on the same banner, you have the Patriots. I do. I don't know if you can really see that. Or essentially what it says is, is, is my, I am my kids with death hands and my wife. <laughs> I see that now. That's oh, okay. Yeah. It's a, People who, when I get on these calls and I see that, all they see is logo. <laughs> no, I am not a Patriots fan. That's no offense. But now who's doing? But who's doing the major food prep on game day? Well, you may want to get in their good graces. You know, we've been married thirty years, so at the end of the day, you know, we we've gotten through it. But uh, you, you know, this is going to sound silly. That when the Patriots in the Super Bowl, I don't even watch it anymore. I. I went to the movie two years ago when they were in the Super Bowl. I watched Green Book. <laughs> I was the only person in the theater. Is it, you know, is it because you just, the game has changed so much over the years? Or no, I just, I, I, I just had, a, just, when you, listen, I'm a Jeff fan. And when you're a Jeff oh, fan, I know. And, you, and you went through the Bill Belichick, you know, fiasco when he was your coach for one day, and this guy then up and leaves and takes another team to the Super Bowl 18 million times, you, you just kind of go, enough, I can't deal with it. So yeah. that's where I'm at. I was actually very happy I was able to watch the Super Bowl this year. <laughs> <laughs> happy for you. <laughs> anyway, we only have a, we have a couple more minutes here with, with Jamie, and, and, and we want to thank him for his time. And, and um, I would encourage people uh, to, to go to phoenixdesignworks.com. That's his website. Yep. ton of information there. You can see all his clients. You can see all the references you can you know um and obviously you know uh, jamie's wife amy who is is also a dear friend they're a great team a great couple great company oh, and um you know for those of you who you know just to recap about phoenix design works they're a leader in providing branding marketing and advertising services to the collegiate sports and consumer marketplaces uh, they've been branding and advertising for over 250 collegiate institutions across the country and um, this is one talented dude and, and, and a good guy. And so if anybody is in of need of these, you know, I can, I'll certainly vouch for them uh, any day of the week. So that's very kind of you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time, Jamie. Uh, I just gave the website, but uh, you know, people wanted to get a hold of you. What's the best, how, what's the best way for them to get a hold of you? 
Sure. So they can go to the website. There is a contact uh, function there. Okay. Um, they can also reach us at uh, J A M I E at phoenixdesignworks.com or A M Y at phoenixdesignworks.com. Uh, the phone number is uh, 973-763-8200. I think that's right. You know what? Let me check because I never call myself. No, nobody would, why would you? Uh, <laughs> 973-763-8200. There you go. <laughs> and, uh, and what else? So let's see. We've got and social. You know, we're on. Uh, we never met a social media platform. We didn't feel the need to uh, be on. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, all that good stuff. I am not on TikTok. I think I. <laughs> I think TikTok will come and go without me. Right. I, <laughs> but I think, you know, and I just want to say one one last thing. You know, because we're sure. talking about we're talking about branding. We're talking about historic historically. You know, the world of branding and and what we do and, and getting results and, and uh, servicing our constituent bases and, and all those good things. And we kind of talked about uh, coronavirus and, and you know, some of the things that we did when we didn't know what tomorrow would be. Um, and then how some of the, um, our clients were able to come back. And, and, and again, I just want to stress, I think it is so positive when people see somebody, because if you commit to a new brand in the middle of all of this, that's such a positive message for people. They, yeah. they want that. They, they want that kind of news, you know, and as do we all. Uh, and so now I think a, there's a lesson to be learned. Um, I, I think that, you know, when we were forced into this, we were like, this is just crazy, crazy that, you know, it's two things. One, everybody had to shut down for months and months and we're, and we're still to a large degree figuring out how to come back. Right. Um, but the, also the, the human contact as human beings, we are social creatures. Okay. We, you know, we want, and, and, and that's a huge aspect of, you know, so much of sports is like, Oh my God, you know, I just, I can't, you know, you see it like I do on Facebook on how many people are posting every day. I just need to go see a game that right. wasn't in 1973, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you need to see a new game. <laughs> and so, you know, and I just, the thing I love about sports is the, is just, you know, the best part of uh, sports is when you see an athlete and, so, and this is, you know, especially true with collegiate, is when you see an athlete do something that even they didn't know they could do, that's just magic. That's just such a, a magic thing about, about it. It brings us all together because we're all human beings and we can understand that. But I think with the coronavirus, that's going to affect uh, branding in the sense that um, I think compassion and in in that human elements are going to be more important than perhaps we might have taken them for granted prior to this you know let's I, hope so yeah. yeah i think so yeah i think so well hi uh, jamie uh jamie skiles i appreciate your time this is uh dave Theromeo with the sports business institute and latin business today and Today we've been talking to, uh, like I said, a great friend, a, a, a very talented individual, Jamie Skiles with Phoenix Design Works. And Jamie, wish you nothing but the best. You know that, brother. Uh, you know, with your business, personally, professionally, with the dogs Absolutely. and everything. So, I thank you for everything, brother. And uh, and let's all go out there and win. That's it. Amen. All right, brother. Thanks, pal.